All right, welcome to Doozer Shop. My lens is probably dirty, but I don't care. Um, we got the fire truck out in the field here, um, and it's going to be kind of kind of a first start, you could say. In it's been sitting here about six years, I I I, I believe. Um, and the reason I parked it here, it was over down by the the shop, and uh, we were having a huge windstorm coming. So I parked both my fire trucks here in the field uh, to get them away from any trees that may fall. Um, and then the tires popped, like two tires on one popped, two tires on the other popped, three tires, because they're inner tubes and they're old and I pumped the tires up and the rims are probably rusty and the rust probably popped the tubes or they're just old and who knows why they popped. But then they sat here and had jacked them up and blocked them up. Um, and let me take you handheld and I'll show you what what I got done here. Um, I got the other fire truck moved maybe a year ago. Um, it's down by the house, but this one's still here. Well, let me take you handheld and we'll go through a little bit of what I got accomplished in order to try start this and hopefully move it today. All right. Um, so let me back up. So this is, I can barely see the, the viewfinder because the sun's so bright. This is a 60, 1968 R185 International. So it's like an F800 or an F850 Ford as far as, I don't know, is that a three and a half ton or something? I don't know, four ton, whatever, I don't know. Um, but anyhow, it's, it's a 68, I think it might be a 67, because I think they international titled them when they sold them, not when they built them. So it's a 67 or 68. R185, they're called an R, R185-6 if they're the fire package. So this is technically an R185-6. 7,500 miles on it. Um, let me show you. So brand new tires and brand new rims on the front, okay? These I think are 295, 75, 225. It had 20 inch rims on it. You, it's hard to find 20s, and 20s are tube tires, and these are tubeless, and da 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 da. So these are brand new tires on the front, and the brand new 225 rims, upgraded from the 20s. And the backs are also brand new rims, uh, dualies, so there's two per side, brand new rims, and retreaded tires. Uh, I, I got a decent deal on these. Uh, I decided to save a little bit of money and go with retreads on the back and kept the new ones on the front, of course, for steering, for safety. Um, these are Goodyear retreads. These are a really good retread process. I used to work for Michelin retread, and actually I kind of like these a bit better. Don't, don't, don't tell anybody. Ha! Ah. Um, so let me kind of take you around. Um, I had mothballs in there and da-da-da-da. Keep the mice away. I got one battery. There should be enough to crank it. Um, it takes two batteries if you want. So this is the engine. It is a, like I said, um, 7,500 miles. That's it. It's like brand new. Um, 501 International. This started out in the 1920s as a uh, tractor engine, overhead valve, even in 1920. I forget what they call it. The the F JD or FWD or it started out as like 233 or some cubic inches uh, with sleeves. Uh, there was a 401 or something, a 450, both with sleeves, and the 501 does not have sleeves. So this is like a conventional bore and block. Um, man, the chrome on this thing's even, even still nice. Uh, they must have waxed the heck out of it. So, what I got going, uh, I've kept it covered up with a tarp to keep the rain at least off the cab and off the, you know, weather seals and everything to keep the rain out. Um, I got a uh, small tank here, a two gallon tank. It's, it's off like a Cub Cadet or something. Um, so, I have rust in the main tank, so I don't want to screw around with that. Um, I got a fuel filter and a little ticker ticker pump going 
right to the carburetor. The reason I got a ticker, ticker pump, an impulse pump, is it, a gravity feed would work, but there's a hair, hair spring on the float that you need some fuel pressure, like even a half a pound of fuel pressure to overcome, it's like an anti-vibration spring on the float. So, so that's what that is. Um, I got the tank uh, pump on just alligator clips, and I got some wires there for the, the gumball on the roof, and I just turn on the gumball, and it goes tick, 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 tick. Um, carburetor is a Holly teapot. I rebuilt this before I parked it five years ago. It ran fine. Um, ran great when I parked it, and it's it's only been here five or six years. I, I, I really don't know what five or six. Um, I've got the uh, air cleaner off and the air cleaner hose. Um, I want to try and start it. So what I got here, this is uh, gasoline in the uh, little container here. I'm going to, man, I want to climb up on the bumper here and try to let me show you guys. Alright. So this is a Holly teapot. I don't know how to fill the bowl. Oh no, it, the, the, the fuel pump fills it. That's right. Actually, the fuel bowl is on top. Isn't that, isn't that a hoot? The, the, the fuel bowl is on top. So let me put some gas in it with the, my little gas shooter there. I, I don't know how much it's going to take. It's going to take a bunch. Because it's been sitting here for freaking ever. Alright, that's probably flooding the absolute crap out of it. So, let me get my thing here. My little captastic. Let's go and crank it. And I don't know what's going to happen. Let me crank on it. I have not cranked this yet. Let's do it. I don't know if I have spark. I used to have spark. I'm going to throw some more gas in it. Hope I didn't flood it. I didn't bring any ether. I, I thought maybe I wouldn't need it. But maybe it couldn't hurt to give it a whiff. Let me give it just a little bit just to make sure I got a spark so I don't run my battery completely dead. Let me grab a can and I'll bring you back. Got some ether. Let me give it a little hit and we'll see what it does. Fingers.
He should have done something. Let me check the points. Let me check for spark. Just because I don't want to over crank anything. Be right back. All right, um, I checked the points and they were dirty. So I got some emery cloth and I cleaned them and I got a spark now. I knew something was up, so I'm glad I kind of paused. Let me crank it now with the choke open and see what happens. Not getting fuel. Well, it's, it's getting fuel. I think my spark stopped again for some reason. Huh? It's gonna start. I know, but I I, I think them points are so dirty. Let me check the points again, and I'll bring you back. All right, <clears throat> I cleaned the points again, and now it's definitely sparking. Um, the point gap is like a sixteenth of an inch. I know it's supposed to be twenty or thirty thousandths, but it seems to be sparking when I crank it. About a three-quarter inch spark. So let's try it again. It's been si oh, it's been sitting for about fifteen minutes. I went. I go got a drink of water. If it was flooded out, I let it set 15 minutes. Let's try it again. That was a bee. I whacked them.
up and down. I'm not sure why. Probably because my wonky ass fuel system. And then it died and it wouldn't restart because I sucked all the gas dry in my little tank. So I put another half gallon of gas in and I'm going to start it again. I'm gonna check the ignition or something. I, I, I'm gonna let it set. I, I don't know. I want to get it to idle. The carb might be dirty again. I, I, I cleaned this carb five years ago, but I've also got a, a new old stock carburetor, or maybe it was rebuilt in the 70s. I don't know. I'm gonna let it sit again and try to start it. Maybe I flooded it. I don't know. I haven't figured this engine out yet. I'll bring you back. All right, folks. Um, I'm giving up for today. I got it to flutter a little bit, and then I don't know if I flooded it again. I checked the spark. Checked the points. I got three-quarter inch spark. The battery is just starting to get a bit low. So I took it off, carry it back down to the shop. I'm gonna leave the battery on the charger overnight. I got a four amp charger, trickle it overnight. And, uh, cause you know, I, I, I know how not to crank an engine too much. Um, so I'm pretty conservative with that. I'm not gonna get the jumper cables. I'm not gonna keep going. 
because it's Saturday. I can mess around with this a bit Sunday. Um, I don't know if I flooded it. It's got a Holly teapot carburetor. Well, let me take you over there and, and I'll show that to you. So, what that is, it's kind of a funky setup. The float is actually above the throttle plates. It's kind of funky. So I got this one and I took it apart and cleaned it and put it back together. The, the, this thing here is the accelerator pump. That works. I mean, I know there's fl uh, gas in it. I don't know how easy this engine is to flood or not flood. I just don't know yet. I could have flooded it. But I did run out of gas and I just, I put more gas in and I let the fuel pump run and I started it and then it's, I forgot to turn the fuel pump on and it stalled and I couldn't get it cranked up again. So maybe I flooded it. The spark is still good. I don't know. But anyhow, this is a, uh, come from this side, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the, uh, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with it more tomorrow. But see, this is a, a vacuum governor on there. And I've got another Holly, a regular modern 1970s Holly, uh, off a 391 FE with a vacuum governor. And, the, and, and this is a, a square bore, this is a smaller pattern than a regular Holly. So I, I may able, be able to adapt the more modern Holly to this one off the 391 Ford motor and still connect up the governor because I don't want to over rev this thing. So we'll see what that, if I, if I do that, or I got to spare one of these. But right now I'm just going to charge the battery overnight, let this set, and uh, oops, and we'll see what's going on. So uh, until I play with this again, this is Dozer Shop. All right, a quick addendum. Um, Quite possibly I may have been correct with my carburetor thoughts because I just seen uh, this teapot holly is leaking fuel while it's not running into down in the throat into the butterflies. Yeah, this this sucker forgive the camera angle. You know what? I'm gonna take my pogo stick off. Alright. And there's a runner rototiller next door. Um, right down, you know, this this whole thing's the, the float chamber, and there's the fuel pump. I was seeing fuel just leak down, drip, 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 while it's not even running. So what I did is I, I capped off the fuel hose, pulled it off. And I, I, well, it's got a white thing on. I just capped off the fuel line, not that I had to, because there's still some gravity happening through the pump. But this Holly teapot is just weird. And I think a lot of them caught fire, is what I've heard, and I can see why. If it floods, it floods down. It, I, I, I really think I gotta get my standard Holly four barrel on here. And like I said, it's a, it's a governor carb, so I think that'll be a perfect match. I'm gonna to have to redo the throttle linkage, probably, I don't know. Um, we'll see if I put it on sideways or what. I got plenty of hood clearance for sp carb spacers or uh, whatever, air, air cleaners. But while I was letting this thing set to try and clear, clear it from being maybe flooded, it was constantly dripping and flooding itself more. So that's why I couldn't get a handle on if this thing was rich or lean or flooded or not or use choke or don't use choke or use throttle or don't use throttle. That's what's going on. Things dripping. I don't know if there's a gasket bad in there or the float level is too high or if the fuel pump is overcoming the float. 
in some way, shape, or form. I don't know. But that's what was going on. That's why I was having such a hard time. I might let the battery charge two hours, come back out when the sun's a bit less in the sky, and try to fart with it again. But I don't know. I'm going to dig out that other holly and maybe order a rebuild kit from Summit and see where I can get an adapter from Summit too. I think the pattern's about the same. It's just the the, the whole the butter the bores are the same for the barrels, but the bolt pattern for the mounting is different. So I'm going to look at that that up and see what I can find. But anyhow, that's why I was having trouble because this son of a joker was leaking and flooding on its own. And this carburetor must have a hundred parts. A regular Holly maybe has 30 parts. So this is way too complicated. I want a simple, reliable carburetor, and these are from the 1940s or some crazy stuff. I don't even know. I think this is one of the first four barrels ever invented. Possibly. Don't know. I think they were on the 57 Thunderbirds or some crazy stuff. 55 Thunderbirds? Don't know. Anyhow, Maybe I'll film some more later, I don't know, but for now I'm taking a, taking a rest. Do the shop.